What's going on, everybody? You are listening or watching a brand new episode of On Air with JT, and I have a special co-host, Madeline Marquez. How are you doing, Maddie? I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here for your last episode of season 13. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yesterday's episode, Mental Health Awareness Part 2, uh, I think was very good. Uh, it's doing pretty good on you know numbers and everything, and, and people seem to uh, really enjoy that. So I'm really excited to continue doing that as well. Um, but for people that don't know, or maybe you, you know, you've heard, you know, uh, Madeline on the pad- podcast a few times so far during this season, but um, she's going to be on the show a lot more uh, in season 14. Um, we're going to try out like this, we're going to try out uh, basically her being a co-host on the show and uh, we'll see how it goes. And, and uh, yeah, I think, I think it'll be a really cool, different dynamic to the show. You know, I, I like having my own show, but, you know, for me personally, it's not always easy to, you know, sit in front of a camera and a microphone for one to three hours and talk to, you know, be by yourself and, and, and that's it. It makes the, it makes a podcast or an episode or a show so much better when you have an, another person that has, that can chime in, that has a different perspective, that has different opinions and things like that. And especially having a female co-host, you know, it, it's more yeah. diverse so we can get, I was we can get points, we can get points of views and different perspectives from, you know, me and you as well. Um, so I think a lot of people will, will like that. Um, so I'm really excited about that and I'm really excited that you're down to do this. And, uh, I think, uh, I think it's, I think this is going to be really good. Um, but yeah, I can't believe it's, uh, season 13 is, this is it, man. This is the last episode tomorrow. We're going into season 14. Um, I'm a little overwhelmed and stressed out because I have, literally like 30 hours of work to do behind the scenes. And, you know, I talked about on the podcast before, you know, I I was planning on getting all that done while I was in Florida, but unfortunately, you know, it was a, not a, not the best time to, for that to happen, um, to say the least. Um, but yeah, yeah, but, um, I'm, I'm in the process of getting that done, you know, so even tomorrow, you know, I know that I told everyone over the past, you know, season that, you know, season 14 is going to be completely different. Um, and that is the, that is the case, but at the beginning, you know, it's going to still be a little bit of season 13 in terms of, uh, just the kind of content that I'm putting out. Obviously there'll be a lot more like news stories and, and, and interviews and, and things like that. But, um, I still have like some work to do behind the scenes to really get it to where I want it to go in terms of just quality, quantity, visuals, audio, um, and segments, different kind of segments, different topics to talk about and things like that. Um, but just so you guys know that, that that's coming um, very soon. And of course, if you're a business owner, a brand, a company, someone with a product or a service, and you're interested in being an advertiser and promoting your, you know, again, company, brand, sponsor, product, service on this podcast and my several other podcasts that are launching this year, Um, which I'll get into detail, uh, probably not today, but, uh, maybe a little bit, but most likely, uh, more details will come out within the next, uh, week or two. But, uh, yeah, if you're interested in advertising, feel free to email me at onairwithjt at gmail.com. That's onairwithjt at gmail.com. Uh, and of course, you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, so many more different platforms. You can just go to onairwithjt.com. Um, and of course you can follow me on Instagram at, uh, Justin Thomas Insta, J-U-S-T-I-N-T-H-O-M-A-S-I-N-S-T-A. You could follow the show at On Air with JT, Facebook, Justin Thomas, YouTube, On Air with JT, Twitter, On Air with JT, TikTok, Justin Thomas, TikTok, Snapchat, Justin Thomas SC, um, you can just go to onairwithjt.com for all that information. Uh, Madeline, where can people follow you and all that? 
Um, I post most of my content on Facebook, uh, which is just like Madeline Haley Marquez, M-A-D-A-L-Y-N-H-A-L-E-Y-M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z. And on Instagram, it's uh, Madeline with two N's, so M-A-D-A-L-Y-N-N underscore Haley, H-A-L-E-Y. And TikTok and um, YouTube are Lazy Eye. And, uh, yeah, those are my social medias. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Everyone that uh, is listening, go follow her. Like, like I've been saying, she puts out really good content. And her her content and her platform is is growing at a significant pace, you know, just like me. So uh, you, you want to, you know, if, if you want to come across, you know, the, the next big influencer and, and you know, uh, you know, people like that, you know, this is your chance because you don't want to miss out, you know, Cause <laughs> I, I always like, I, I, you know, throughout my life, you know, I, I'm, I'm very good at, you know, um, I don't know. Do you know what an A&R is? No, I, so I an don't. A, so an A&R, you've heard that term probably f- before though, right? I think so. So an, yeah. a, an A&R is an artist and representative. So they work for major record labels and their job is to basically scout local talent and, and figure oh. out like upping the, 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 it's their job to basically find the new, the new the new big thing and then they bring them to the label and they try and work out a deal and i've right. always said that i would be fucking amazing at that because i've made so many predictions of artists that blew up i mean going all the way from i mean the biggest one is, is jack harlow I, I predicted it uh in 2018 i mean he didn't have his first billboard hit until two, 2020 with what's popping um and I, I even have this, you know, the screenshot with the timestamp. And I said that this, this kid is about to blow the fuck up. And that was one of the biggest accurate predictions I've made. I mean, I, I predicted Portugal, the man success, Bozzy, 24 K golden, Pete Davidson, Lauren, really? da- Lauren Daigle. Um, I'm forgetting a few more, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I've always been really good at, I don't know why I, I just, I'm really good at seeing talent. Um, and I love coming across, you know, people that are really talented that will make it. And I, it's a cool feeling to like, you know, see them before they hit that major, you know, milestone of mainstream success or fame, money and all that shit. Um, but yeah, yeah if I, I had half the success of any of those people, I'd be happy. Yeah, okay, you'll, sure. <laughs> you'll, you'll, get, you'll get more than half of that success. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just, it, it's crazy because, you know, I, I was talking about on uh, the Spiritual Experience podcast that I released yesterday, which wasn't that long. Uh, it's, it's, it was actually kind of hard to do, to be honest, because there was a lot of shit I just didn't feel like yeah, talking about imagine. at the moment. But um, it's just crazy. And I think that also has to do with, you know, um, me being just highly intuitive, you know, borderline psychic abilities, you know, on top of just having a good ear for, for music or talent. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I guess my point, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of still like finding people that will be great to interview that I know that are going to be really big one day. And that's not, and my intention isn't to do that to be be like oh i was the first person that interviewed this person before they blew up i mean yeah that would be cool but i just want to be able to give people their flowers because people don't not people do not give people their flowers until it's until they're gone right people don't people don't give them the respect until until people die that's so sad you know i was just saying that the other day like if if something were like god forbid like if i would have like died last year you know, what I overdosed, not to get heavy so deep, but I mean, so quick, but, uh, you know, what would have happened? Like, what would have my content went off then just because I was dead? You know, it's so sad that it has to be like that today. Yeah, it really is. I just feel like people are just so, I mean, there's so many different factors. There's, there's that jealousy, there's envy, there, there's haters, there, there's just, People are just also just whether they know it subconsciously or not, they're just in everyone's in their own world just because of just how detrimental social media is and how we come how we we all have come so isolated. And, you know, there's no really human to human interactions like it was, you know, 20 years ago. 
um, and and it's only going to get worse. Like I've said on my podcast, I mean, we think so, we we think people are delusional and isolated now because of social media. Just wait until virtual reality VR becomes a real until it really takes off. People have no idea like what's going to happen to society. It's going to get to a point where people are not even going to w- get out of their house. Like they're, they're, not everyone. Honestly, but- I'm ready for it. I wasn't mad about. I mean, COVID was horrible because we lost so many people. But like being able to just stay inside and like the 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 lack of need to go anywhere is not too bad for me. No, I, don't know I, I, because- I agree. I agree. But there, there's going to be downsides because we're going to be such in a different reality that we're not in our, in the real reality and we're not living in the moment and we're not going to have that human to human interactions a, as much a, as we ha- are seeing now. And, and that's even very, you know, marginalized What's that movie with uh will smith the what i'm legend where he's like, uh, yeah oh, yeah oh my God. i always like imagine that to, to come to life that would be crazy i don't yeah, think, I, think I've, I don't think i've ever seen the full i don't think i've ever seen watched the full movie but yeah you should take a you could you should watch that movie it's pretty what good. up david <laughs> what's going on man david chin in the in the building chinny murder on, yo uh <laughs> david <laughs> where can people follow you uh, at on Instagram at unruly uh, underscore rev up, uh, on Facebook just type in David Chin and I pop up. Bro, can you do me one favor? What's good? Can you please change that username? I was gonna I changed it. And she was like, ah, uh, please. She said something about it because you shouted out to me on my. I'm gonna change it. It, 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 it. I'm fucking with know, you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with you, but it bothers the shit out of me. I don't know why. What are we changing it to? Like, I don't know what I was going to change it to. No, that was... Don't say it. Don't say it because then someone might take it. So, true, true, yeah. true. No, I'm yeah, definitely not going to... You can't that. take my name. It's going to have my no, last no, name. I'm, I'm talking about the... Yeah, but you, ne- you never know. I got you. I, I've, had, I've had that happen Yeah, before. you're right, though. I've had this right, happen though. before, so trust oh, me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so anyways, back to the subject at hand. The, the I Am Legend movie... Uh, oh, subject at hand. Okay, David. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, nah, I really like the movie. The movie's good. Like um, that movie. A lot of a lot of these movies are based on things that 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 I think would actually happen. Well, uh, uh, you know, you know the movie that I forgot that, that I couldn't think of about the Jim Carrey movie. It's the Truman Show. You guys need to both watch that. And if you watch that. You'll see. This was like in '96 or '97, something like that. It, it's it's you'll you'll see that we're living in a simulation. And, I mean, and, and we they, just talked they, about that yesterday. And they, and they, but... and they warned us, and they they were warning us in in, in a satire way, without being, yeah. without being too obvious. I hate even thinking about it because it's just like religion. Like if it's not tangible. It's really hard for me to believe it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, not, not religion. I, I, I see what you're saying, but religion isn't even the biggest thing with if we are living in a simulation. Like, there, I, I'm saying, like, there's no way to know, like, if it is a simulation or if it's not. Like, we'll never get that answer. I, I mean, there's, there's different levels of simulation. It, you know, it could be like, you know, the simulation that you're thinking of, or it could be like a simulation that is controlled by the government, which is a, 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 a fact that, the you know, the elite, you know, the, the people that run the world... You know, I'm, I'm probably going to die after talking about this shit. The, oh, my God. body goes missing no. one day after this episode airs. But yeah, they're going to take you know, me too. you know, you have all the elite and, and the Bilderberg groups and and, all, and the Rothschilds and all, all, all Rockefellers and all these people, you know, the, the people don't understand that they run the world. So they are they know what's going to happen. They they they, they manipulate whatever that is going to go that's going on whether it's like covid uh or like the economy yeah, or who's going to be pre- i mean they know who's going to be president like two terms bef- like before the new president like they know who's going to run the country 10 years ahead like it's the, right. everything is everything is pla- i don't want to go all, all off alex jones and sound crazy but um <laughs> oh man it, i know it, it's, it's it's such it, a hard subject yeah i might everyone might not agree and that's totally okay but i mean 
if you really do some research and really look in it, look into it, and 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 you're, you know, smart, you, you'll see that you know some things really don't make that much sense, and and a lot of things kind of add up, and it's not in a good way. It's kind of scary because it's like they're playing us like a video game, like all of us. It is a vi- it is a video game, and, and it's, it's like, all, all right, it's, we'll it put is, drugs in here, and then you know other societies are going to be over here, and. I don't even know what I'm thinking because, like, what if it's – is it, like, a simulation for just America or is the, the world, simulation the for world. the entire world? The, the world, and but so, the world, but there are there is probably – if I had to guess, I'm pretty sure that there's an, a, another simulation that's going on, especially in this country. Or at least in, like, you know, you know the, this, uh, you know, Western civilization. Yeah, this type of stuff makes my head spin. It really does. Yeah, it's fucking crazy to think about. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm into conspiracy theories. I mean, there's a lot that are very true. I mean, obviously, there's some that are just total, you know, total utter utter bullshit. But um, there are. Yeah, I mean, th- there, there's. I mean, you you can't deny the fact that there have been so many conspiracy theories, especially ones that are really big that actually are, are true. Um, so it makes you really think about like. Damn, if the government is lying about this and that over all these years and then it gets exposed, what else did they fucking lie about? And what else are they continuing to lie about and what they plan to lie about? It's a scary, it's a, it's a scary fucking thing. Honestly. It really is. We're just a pawn in all of their games, you know? And yeah. I feel like I'm, I mean, all three of us here are, really big statistics you know and i don't want to know i don't want to you know try to go too far into my personal life but i'm a statistic in a lot of in a lot of ways like being a a a child that came from drug addicts so that's like one statistic and then out of five children i became a drug addict i'm like the only one that really did and on top of that i'm like you know uh had a lot of legal issues and whatnot so that's a statistic right there yeah and, and I, it, I, it just, I go go ahead go ahead I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off no it just it just plays into showing like how you know you, you can really categorize all of us in, in america but then when i try to think of it like a more outward perspective like the whole the whole universe then i start thinking about like i don't know like aliens and stuff like that like are they the ones controlling us like yeah. how you know no, you know, I, how far do you want to go down the rabbit hole, really? I know what you're saying. And, and I got like 15 of them, and, and I'm a white male in America, so I can only imagine <laughs> what, what it's like for a black man, you know, in, in this country, in this world, with with those statistics. So uh, it's a crazy world that we live in. And, and unfortunately, you know, we're not heading towards, we're not going into a good direction. You know, World War Three will happen. It's just a matter of, you know, if it's going to happen in two years, five years. I mean, it, it'll, it'll happen and it's going to be very detrimental. It's, it's going to be the worst war of war of all time. One of the worst wars of all time because they're just going to nuke everybody. Everyone's going to get fucking blown the fuck up. Or it's going to be like a cyber war and they're going to take out like our, you know, Internet and I cell mean, phone they're, usage. They're, they're, and- they're already doing that at a... At a certain extent they're already they're already censoring shit they're already censoring people on on the internet and if if you live in the united states the first amendment is freedom of speech freedom of religion freedom of press you have the right in this country to speak your mind Yes, they try to strip us from all the rights, though. And like, They're and like, regard, and you know, day. you know how the whole thing with like Donald Trump getting, and I, if you guys know, if you guys don't know, like I'm, you know, people that are listening or watching, yeah, I'm not a Trump supporter, <laughs> but like, it's just crazy to see that because literally, the, the these people are, it's it's like they they're acting like, again, like you said, it's like a video game. Yeah, that's it's just so hard for me to like really think about that as a subject in a whole because like I've never even voted like not not even once like I've never I've never voted so I I never really even like looked into it I don't watch the news like I'm just so in my own little world when it comes to stuff like that well, because the, it's yeah. it's too scary yeah I'd be I could 
I could watch like a hundred scary movies, but then I turn on the news and then I'm actually scared. You know? Yeah. I mean, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I don't, I don't have cable TV at home just by choice. I don't watch that shit. So when I was in Florida, you know, uh, with my grandparents watching like the local news, it's like every story, murder, murder, pedophilia, suicide, murder, murder, gang, murder. You know, it's, it's like literally it's all, all, all we're seeing is all this. And especially on social media, all we're seeing is all, all of, uh, every, every day, every hour, every second, a, a traumatic experience, you know, traumatic s- situation going down. And we're seeing this and whether we, know this subconsciously or not we're internalizing that and that that affects our mental health by seeing uh, that. The, the media uh, is controlled by the elite also of course well. and the and like i was telling Mad- madeline that 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 basic that i don't know if you know david but 75 percent of advertising all the commercials that you see on tv are by the pharmaceutical industry Oh, I know. Seventy-five percent. That means they basically no, I, run. I didn't know that. the media. I mean, I can't say too much because I don't. You know, I kind of. I definitely believe in like modern science and that. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. Definitely. But but you. But we have to help a lot of people. Yeah, but, but they. But they. But they also do a lot of harm as well. Right. And no, they, that's, and, that's and they exactly are and they are well I mean. aware of they're well aware of the horrible side effects that can come with it. Right. Like I can't I can't speak on it at all, but I have a lawsuit with a certain company yeah. right now. Don't get into it that much. No, I I can't, but like it's it's because of, you know, being prescribed things that aren't useful. I mean, that aren't really supposed to be prescribed long term and you know, the side effects of it, but like that's what I mean, that's that's really my message to talk about, like with with my, you know, drug addiction. I wish I could talk about it more. But when everything is over with it, I'm definitely going to tell my full story on it. And yeah, you're going to have an autobiography or a memoir. Exactly. You know, yeah. I just can't talk about everything right now. I mean, there's a lot of things that I want to be really open about, like all my reels and like shorts and stuff like that. I'm like very open about life and you know, I, a lot of different like demographics do watch my videos. It, it's it's really helpful to a lot of different people, not just moms or not just women. I feel like anybody can benefit from it. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, you know, th- this, this show right now is, is heard in uh, it's at the moment, 18 different countries. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I, we, we, I have, we have people listening in 18 different countries. I wonder, does it like translate or <laughs> I guess they all just, I mean, some of the countries, I, I, um, you know, uh, cause I, I have access to all the analytics so I can see where people are listening right, to. So right. some of them, um, they, they teach English, but, uh, on the other part, maybe someone just learned how to, I, I don't know. I don't think there is, there a tra- I, don't think there is a, I don't think there is, I don't think there is to be honest. Huh, that's so crazy. Like, I know, you know what? That's weird because people do watch my videos in a lot of different, you know, countries. I can't remember, like, what they are right now, but I know, like, somebody from definitely people in, like, India, Africa. Yep, India, watch Africa, my Australia, Italy, France, right. Germany, uh, Brazil, Morocco, Colombia, Morocco, Canada, obviously. Um, we got a lot of, we got a lot of listeners in Canada. So shout out to Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't wait to go to Canada. I, I got my passport, so I'm going to be in Canada soon. I, I don't live that far away from Canada cause I'm in Boston. So I think it's only like, that's so exciting. Five, I think it's only like a five hour drive. Um, yeah, so, oh, really? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, I tell, um, uh, but I, I want to go to different parts. I want to check out Toronto obviously cause of Drake. Is that further? I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm not good with geography. I would low key like to live in Canada at some point. Maybe. Well, I'm a, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a property there one day. Yeah, Canada's kind of dope. But you know, you know, David, you know, with the the once I get obviously once I get my first house, and you know, you you know where I'm gonna get my second house, bro? Where? Nantucket. Oh shoot! Or somewhere man. on Martha's Vineyard or some shit like you know. Oh man, 
I'd like to leave the country. Hey, Matt, one Matt day. you probably, Matt, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna send you. I'm yeah, gonna, I, I, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm gonna send. I'm, 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 I'm gonna send you what the houses look like over there. Yeah, <laughs> you'll, you'll see what I mean. Like hy- like what about like hyenas? hyenas yeah, that? all of that. Yeah. yeah, hyenas, Nantucket, all that. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been to Boston. That's like Obama. Like, Obama. Like, Obama. Like, like Obama lives there. Obama. Like their store. Obama lives there. He bought a house there a couple years ago for like ten point five. That's that's good. That's yeah. the North Shore, right? Uh no. What is that? What is that considered again? I can't remember. Um, well, the South Shore, North Shore, but the the, the Hyannis, Nantucket, and Martha's Vineyard. I mean, that's on the other part of Massachusetts. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I I'm from. I'm from New Jersey, and yesterday one of David's friends came over uh, to cut his hair, or to you know trim up his hair and stuff like that. And uh, he was like, he was like, yeah, you you know you're gonna be the next girl from Palm Coast to blow up. And I'm like, I am not from Palm Coast. I said, uh, you know, the host JT went to school here like for a couple years. All right, now hold on, but... now let's be honest here. What did you really say by accident? <laughs> I didn't want to say it because you. No, say. It. I... Because I, right. we gotta I said, we gotta clarify this because I do not. I said JT is from Palm Coast. Okay, but he's and some people he's... think that, and that's not true. I I was born and raised <laughs> in Boston. I'm a Bostonian. I moved oh, to Florida when I was 14 for high school. I graduated and I got the fuck out of that shitty state. <laughs> oh my god, this yeah. the whole state though. It's the whole state. And I don't want to shit on Florida. I haven't even I haven't even been to like Miami or like right. so, other, other parts. But like just for me personally, just for me personally, you know, being from Boston up north, I just do I don't like the slow pace of Florida. I don't I just don't no, like I get it. that. I don't I, like I, it. I, I just it's, just from not, Jersey, it's not for me. It's not for me. If you like Florida and you're from Florida or whatever and you're happy, all all power to you. But just for me personally from being from Boston, Florida is just not, I, like, yes, I'll have properties in Florida, but just to, you know. But not to, to live there. Not to live like, there, yeah. Just, right, Just yeah. to rent, rent out and, and, you know. I obviously. like seasons. I really do. Yeah, I know? love the four seasons. I, I love fall. I feel Fall's like my favorite I'm fucking season. confused. My body is confused. I've only been here for, like, less than, less than, a, less than six months, and I still don't understand it. Like, my body's like, is it still summer? Yeah, like, it, I, it's crazy. I it, and it's crazy because... You know, when I found out that I was moving to Florida, I was like, oh, shit. OK, like hot weather. Right. You know, like it's like, it's like right. You would think that. Right. And then I, you know, I threw away all my winter jackets and everything. But little did I know oh, that no. like Palm Coast, the part of Florida that I was living in, it was like northern. Is it northern central Florida, David? Yeah. yeah. So it, so so if you don't know, it gets kind of it gets a little cold at times. Well, yeah. co- the cold, quote unquote, for for, for for Florida people, for me, for like me, 40. I'm in shorts, but, but, uh, yeah, um, I was not expecting that when I moved to Florida, especially the, in 08, like, I think it dropped down at one point to like almost like 28 degrees or some shit. I was like, what the fuck? Am I in Florida or am I in Boston? Yeah, I, I really would like, if I was going to stay in Florida, I think I would rather live like either at least in Orlando, like at least get that far down and eventually, you know, either Tampa or Miami, I, and it's faster paced down there. Like when I was, uh, staying in Orlando, is it, is it, it Wintergate, Wintergate that, that, yeah, okay, yeah, that around that Sha- area. Sha- Shaq lives there. A lot oh, of, a yeah. lot, a lot of people, a lot of su- successful, famous people live in, uh, I believe that, I believe that's where it is. Winter Garden. No, I think. No, I don't, I don't, no, no, it's not Winter Garden. It, it's something else. I can't think of it off, off the top of my head. But I don't it, know. It's I, a very, it's a very, very exclusive, rich area of Orlando. I like Orlando. I really do. It, it's, I don't it's, know. Why do you like? It's it? all right because first of all, I, I mean, I really do like warm weather because I think maybe because I'm anemic and I just I'm I fu- cold all the I time. I fucking hate it. I hate it. But like, I like the seasons. Don't get me wrong, but it's beautiful in my opinion. I love the water. I love swimming. You know, palm trees are cool. You know, I, I, I was living in cities like like Philadelphia, Atlantic City, Newark, and and places like that, and it's just bricks. You know what I mean? So this is beautiful in my opinion, but. You know, just wait, I, I like, just wait till you go to California. Oh, man, I, I it's a, it's my dream. And I really I really hope that 
we can go when you go. Uh, well, in six months or whatever we'll, you were saying. We'll set it. We'll set that trip up. I can't wait. I'm gonna be in San Francisco in a in a couple of weeks. And, and if you don't know, if you don't know Maddie and David, but like um, San Francisco, like the Bay Area, it's it, it's Northern California. It's not like Southern California, like L.A. So it doesn't get as it doesn't get really hot in in, in that area. So it's like oh, wow. it's basically like fall weather up north all year round all the time in the bay area san francisco it's like perfect hoodie what? weather like 68 69 70 degrees all that's the t- like my favorite exact, thing. exactly exactly it, it's like san diego's like that as well and i haven't been there i can't wait to go there but yeah that that, that i i fucking loved that when i was living yeah there. that's like my favorite yeah it was really cool i mean san francisco is, is, is really it's one of my favorite places, the the Bay Area. Like, and if you guys have never, anyone that's listening, if you've never been there, you gotta check it out. And I and I know, <coughs> you know, you see on the news that you know San Francisco is a shithole right now, and it is because of just the hor like the horrible uh, amount of statistics of homeless people. Uh, it's so fucking. It was so heartbreaking seeing that. Like, it it was, it was really sad. Um, and obviously with the crime and, and everything, it's really fucking bad. Um, I've watched a lot of documentaries. People, on, on pe- California. It's so bad right now in San Francisco that people ha- pe- that, that like not just like a couple people, but like if you walk down the street, you'll see that people wrote on a piece of paper, taped it to the window saying, I do not have anything valuable in this car. Please don't smash the window. Oh my god! Like it's that—it's that, like that. Like, pe- like, like you'll literally walk down and just see that on like the majority of the cars. Wow, that—that's crazy to have to do that. I—I I don't think I've seen anything like that in Philadelphia or Camden, you know, because I've never seen that in Boston. Shit. Yeah, I feel like that would just make somebody in New Jersey because they're so, you know, uh, angry all the time, just want to do it anyway, just yeah. for the shits and gigs. And I think another reason why I like San Francisco. I like California, but especially San Francisco, the Bay Area a lot is because, and I know a lot, I'm going to probably get a lot of hate from this, but like, you know, as, you know, being a Bostonian, you know, if you don't know, Boston, Massachusetts is one of the most liberal states. It is the one of the most liberal, like the top liberal states in the country. Um, and so is San Francisco. They're very, it's like, it's like hand in hand. So I, that was another reason why I kind of liked it. And I love how San Francisco, you know, has decriminalized or in the process of, you know, getting psychedelics legalized. And that's going to be a, a really good start to having other states and cities starting to implement that. Because I've talked, you know, I've been talking, you know, during season 13 about how, you know, we are going to see psychedelics getting legalized or de- at least decriminalized in, you know, the southern states. But in a lot of the liberal states, we're going to see that they will get legalized. Now, the question is, are they just going to legalize, like, shrooms and things like that? Or, you know, because then there's going to be this whole debate, well, like, yeah, shrooms versus acid and ayahuasca or DMT, you know, you know, and then people that have never done it, they're, they're going to have their own bias and own, own opinion. But we'll get to the point where at least shrooms and things like that will get legalized. And then eventually other psychedelics will everything will get legalized and eventually even get legalized on a federal level. But the, the thing is, with do you, the far, with, why do they do that? Like, why are they legalizing it? I'm just curious. Not that oh, because, I'm against it. I just don't because know. because they. I mean, if you if if you've taken psychedelics, you know the the beauty uh, the beauty of it and how powerful it can change a person and, and help someone. And we're seeing you can if people don't know this, you can see this and you can do the your own research for yourself on mo- on thousands and thousands of of articles and, and and research on this is that it's a proven fact that psychedelics can significantly improve your mental health disorders and mental health issues. Now, I do I do want to say as a disclaimer, I do not encourage someone especially that has mental health issues and that have taken acid and things like that and have had bad trips. You can, you know, I, I obviously you got to be of age, you know, you know, and, and you, you have to, you have to be in the right mind frames. You have to you can, you cannot be in a negative mind state. 
Because if so, you are, are they going to have like dispensaries? Yeah, I, I mean, think I, like, like I told you, when I was living in San Francisco, we went to Oakland with my roommate, and there was a fucking mushroom dispensary. I was like, "What the? I, yeah, I, I, I didn't even I, know that was I a fucking thing. That. that that was like so fucking cool." <laughs> I wish that, that they could have more of that. Like, if they're going to, oh it yeah, that's going to be a thing. It's going to, it's going to, it's it's going to be like that with weed dispensaries within the. Because my friend told me about a story, like not not to cut you off, but like I, just so I can get it out real yeah, quick. Yeah, of course. He had, um, you know, mushrooms or whatever, and um, he like you know the bottom of the bag, like that's all like crumbs and stuff like that, yeah. and. Uh, so you never know like how much that really is. And he, and he did it and he said that he couldn't figure out how to go to the bathroom and he also couldn't figure out how to get his pants on even though they were like right on on the floor or something like that. I'm not going to say who this was, but it, it <laughs> you know, like that's scary shit right there. Like if people are really going to do it and say that it's for bettering your mind and not just to get high, then I think that it should be more regulated. That's just my opinion. Because I know people that are burnt out because of stuff like that. And yeah, I agree. I mean, what about like, what is your opinion on like uh, people thinking that ketamine is okay? Like, I, it, it is. It, there, there's actually proven research that ketamine will helps depression and, and helps with mental health issues. And and, so and, and, and and psychiatrists and places are actually administrating this. They, they, at least in Massachusetts, I'm 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 in the process of trying to get that really? get that done. Yeah. Um, you, I so you, you want to go? I'm going to try. I'm going to try that out. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. See, it's I just get so, it's I don't know why I get afraid of that type of stuff because I literally would buy drugs from like just random fucking people and do it and just you know what like it's whatever. But when it comes to something that like the FDA is trying to approve, I'm like, yeah, I don't know about it. Like in my mind, is so backwards. I think. I mean, the FDA. Because I don't trust the government. Yeah, I don't trust but, the government. That's why. But you got to realize that uh, ketamine and psychedelics they're, they're all kind of related so and, and you know that there are Isn't so it? many I didn't know they're that. all i, didn't I mean not that. like and i i don't i i'm i don't think ketamine is necessarily um a hallucinogenous but like it, it doesn't make you hallucinate but um i'm not 100 percent sure because i've obviously never done it i have to do Isn't the research that, it, it, it's horse it's horse tranquilizer right That's um I've heard that, but I'm not 100% sure. Ketam- I, have to, I have to do my research on that. I could say like 99.8% sure that it's the horse ca- tranquilizer. Yeah. But I, I, mean, I, I don't, I mean, I think I just watched something on it uh, like like a week ago. And and yeah, I think it definitely, I think it definitely is horse tranquilizer. But I don't know, I don't know what the side effects are like long term of stuff like that because like, you know, I mean, look at the side effects. Look at the side. Of, look at the side effects of, of of medication. And I've been on medication for twenty three, twenty two years of my life, and there are serious side effects that I, I'm I've experienced and I'm seeing from taking that even till this day. Yeah, I, you know, David and I, I don't know if he wants to speak on it, but he was just telling me, um, you know, he has ADHD. And we talked about that in the last, uh, you know, podcast, but he has been on medication, like some type of stimulant, you know, from like six years old till like, I guess the end of middle school. And then that literally will mess up like your brain chemistry for, for a long time. And Oh yeah. And what, now- ha- what happened to me? I don't mean to cut you off, but what happened to me okay. was w- when I was first diagnosed with ADHD, they put me on Ritalin and I went the fuck off. It had a horrible effect on me. And it, it like that, like made me ended up going into the hospitals and, and I should fucking sue them. I mean, that, 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 that was one of the, that, me taking that, it had a horrible side effect and that led to, uh, you know, me being hospitalized multiple times, being in a program. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I, I, I do take Adderall. I get, I get prescribed Adderall and I have been, and I've been on Adderall for over 15 years of my life. Actually, yeah, 15, 17 years. But um, so some people probably think, you know, when I'm talking like, damn, this dude's on coke. No, it's just Adderall. (laughs) But here's the point. Here's what I'm trying to say is that, you know, 
with the with the um, psychedelics, once they do get legalized, the pharmaceutical industry are going to start doing they're they're going to start selling that. Just how like how they're going to start doing cannabis, we're going to start seeing that. I mean, just look how just look how they do with Adderall. It's literally like you know, it's methamphetamine. It's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's methamphetamine. Exactly. Exactly. It's methamphetamine. <laughs> but so, I, I mean, about, it says it. Yeah, on I, the on the on yeah, the bottle, the prescription, yeah. amphetamine. Yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's like coke. It's yeah, uh, I, 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 to, a little to, to, yeah, a little different. But for for me personally, maybe just because I've been on Adderall my whole life, it, it feels the same, pretty much. Um, I yeah. can see, I, you know, I can see how, but like amphetamines is more like definitely like yes. yeah, like super awake. And it doesn't give you that bad crash. And with like coke or crack, you're gonna get like a super, a super high, and then it will crash. And like oh yeah, and if you I've dealt with that. And if you have mental health disorders, that that is that will lead to a a a not good day or a couple days or a week or even longer. Yeah, I I I learned that the hard way. Yeah, it's it's really hard, you know. Like when I was in that come down is real. Is is it it really is? It really is. When I was in my active addiction, like there would be times where I would go like probably months doing that type of stuff. And then, you know, for months after that, I'm trying to get my brain chemistry and everything back to normal and my body back to normal. Because normally, like I have a a blood disorder. So, like, if I say I relapse and go on a run and, you know, this was before I had my daughter or whatever, I would end up in the hospital, like needing blood transfusions, needing this or that. It's just, it's just not good. You know, drugs altogether is just not good unless it helps you in some way, but yeah. drugs like crack and heroin are, are not helping anybody in any type of way. Yeah. And we definitely don't want to encourage that to anybody. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial break. You are listening to On Air with JT. Yes, sir, bitch. Welcome back to On Air with JT. You are listening to one of the best podcasts in the motherfucking world. Of course, if you are interested in advertising or promoting your business brand product service on this podcast, my social media platforms, in addition to multiple new podcasts that are coming out this year, uh, this is your time because, again, the rates are just going to keep going up, going up. So you oh, might as no. well get in while you can. You don't want to be that idiot that fucking, you know, you know, you know the story about Steve Jobs. You know, he, you know, he went door to door offering stock in Apple for a very small amount of money, and he got rejected so much. And look, look at those people, fucking. Oh God. They could have been fucking worth a hundred, two hundred million dollars. But you gotta uh, have the confidence. Of course, that, that's the Kanye in me. Um, I, one thing I do want to, yeah, before I get into that, uh, again, if you are interested in advertising, email me at onairwithjt at gmail.com. One thing I do want to say before we kind of get into the recap is that, you know, I'm getting a little bit of comments about um, me posting Kanye West. And I just want to clarify something. I, what his anti-Semitic remarks is totally unacceptable and that that's not okay to th- and not okay to fucking say. And, and that hurts people. And he's obviously mentally sick. And that that not that's not a, a full excuse that we can give him. But um, I do not condone. I don't agree with all that ideology whatsoever. But I'm still gonna post Kanye's music and in quotes because he's my favorite rapper artist. I'm a fan of his work, not, you know, I don't have to be a fan of his ideology and beliefs all the time. You know, there, are there some things he said in the past that are, you know, he's a, he's a genius. I mean, you can't, whether you like Kanye West or not, you know, you can't deny the fact he's a fucking genius. I mean, you just can't. I mean, if you, if you are, you're just fucking lying to yourself. I mean, I think we can all come to that conclusion, but just to wrap it up, I'm still going to post, you know, my Kanye music because, you know, I, I relate to it so much. And, um, yeah, just what, you know, it, I, I'm going to keep doing that. And it, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry if it offends you. And I'm not posting it to be like, hey, you know, yeah, I'm anti-Semitic too because I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I don't hate anybody. Um, so, I, I yeah, I, I'm still going to post his music so if you don't like it suck a dick honestly 
Um, that's all I got to say. But yeah. To, to... I didn't even know you were having negative comments about that. I mean, of course, there probably is. I just don't really look at the Oh, comments. yeah, I did. And then I had a little debate with somebody and they couldn't even come back with a response. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, people just jump on bandwagons a lot of the time. No, but, but I, 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 understand. I understand what 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 he's saying. He said he said Hitler was not a bad guy. You you can't say that. You you can't you can't fucking say that. This man, yeah, you know, this man, yeah, this man literally killed millions of people. You can't say that. I didn't know he said that. He, yeah. he, uh, you can't David you you can't say that. You just can't. I mean. What? He said he, he said Hitler wasn't a bad guy. I, I see, you can't I say that. that. He said that on Alex Jones podcast. Yeah, Kanye said Hitler wasn't a bad guy. You can't say that. It's I, fucking. You, you, I, he's I sick. He's that. sick and he's delusional. And, and there's yeah, there's someone there's someone in there's someone in his circle that that's feeding him this bullshit. Yeah, I, you true. know what I think? I, I mean, we were talking about the Kardashians yesterday, and and I still I still love them because. You know, I do. And I because it's like the same thing with Kanye. Like, I don't agree with what they're doing. But sometimes I think that, like, the Kardashians are doing this to Kanye, m- trying to make him look crazier because this is the worst that like worst thing that's ever happened. Like, yes. He yes. And no. Crazy. Yes. And no. But it's not just him. It, it, it's because just like me with Kanye, you know, we, we speak our minds and, and we're visionaries. So people might not always see what really what we're in under fully comprehend what we're under what we're saying until it actually becomes a fucking thing um not necessarily not saying that everything that he said you know i agree with but um yeah and of course all this hate on on people that that is just fucking totally unacceptable and that you know that that i i I can't give someone an excuse on that regardless if he has bipolar and i do too you know that even I, I, yeah, you, you can't, yeah, you, you, can't say that. you can't say that. You can't fucking say that. And it, it, it's crazy because this is the first time that we that we really seen this. This from being a rapper, you know, producer to a rapper to becoming a mega superstar to be, you know, labeled as one of the greats, which he is. But and for him to accumulate, uh, you know, multi, you know, have, have billions and, and have all these deals, and over one tweet, he 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 lost all of his sponsorships, deals. Gap the whole Gap deal fell through, which I he did that on purpose though. Um, right. um, I've seen that that meme or real yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It, it's fucking wild. I don't think he can really care. Like he's still a billionaire. Like well, not you know, not 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 at the moment. No, he's not. That, oh, no? That's that's the crazy thing. And, and I don't know if you even know that banks, uh, uh, one of his main banks, um, re- refused to work with him now. So now, like even even the banks, like that's fucking they, that's they, fucking uh, crazy that a bank that a bank can up. say to you, nah, you can't have your money. Yeah, he and he had like hundred and sixty five million there. So he's and he's making them mm-hmm. money, and and <laughs> that it, it's crazy. But again, that does not condone what what he's saying. Um, But again, I'm always going to post, you know, my favorite Kanye music because that that inspires me. And, you know, uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, remember, like, obviously, when Chris Brown or Rihanna punched Rihanna in the face and and then I like hated Chris Brown. Like, I was like, nope, I can't. listen. Everyone did. And like till this day. And then David will put Chris Brown on and and like up. I feel like I didn't even like to listen to him until about a year ago. I don't ago. like it. I don't like uh, this is a very unop- un- unpopular unpopular opinion. I do not like I just don't personally like like new Chris Brown shit. Like I just like his old stuff. I don't like I'm not a big fan of his new stuff. No, I don't I, I don't know why. That's that's just me personally. New stuff, new he stuff don't. Is and he's very ta- he's very talented and I give him his flowers. Just for me personally, I just like his old his old shit. I don't know. Up until what years? Honestly, like even a, maybe even a little bit before 2014, maybe. I think for me, it's funny you said that. I think for me, 
the most recent album. I listened to his last album, the most recent one. Bro, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't listened to right. like, I haven't Not listened like to an before. album or I haven't listened to his albums in since like 2013, 2014. His music, his music matured. He's not the same Chris Brown. Obviously, as you get older, you're gonna mature anyways. But yeah, you, you grow, different. you grow as an artist. Yeah, he definitely grew as an artist. You know, he, I got a lot of respect. The 2014 Chris Brown is the one we all want because. That's when he switched up and started rapping. And doing is that is that is that one? Um, what, what's the name of the uh, what's the name of the song? Um, with Buster Rhymes. Oh. Uh, Fuck. I, what is it? Look at me now. Yeah, yeah. Was that twenty four? Yeah. Was that twenty fourteen or was that twenty thirteen? I think that was twenty. Was that even a little bit sooner? It might have been twenty twelve. Somewhere in between. It might have been somewhere in between. Or yeah. maybe it might have been. Oh man, you're right. It was between probably 2012 and 2014. I'd yeah, say. that that was good, uh, Chris Brown, but I don't know. That, I, I that's just me personally. But uh, yeah, I mean, yo, this this season has been crazy. You know, I talked about openly, like, you know, one of the biggest failures and mistakes that I had in my life professionally is. You know, and I'm open about this because I want to show the world that, you know, you learn from your mistakes and failures and I'll still overcome this and, you know, it doesn't matter. But, um, you know, I, I talk openly about how me and Joe Rogan started podcasting at the same time, the same year on the same website, Ustream.com. And there was, you know, it was 2010, I was 16 years old, you know, you know, and there was a time where people knew me as being the podcaster, not Joe Rogan. And, and that was fucking weird, especially also being the first person that to do a podcast, you know, and where I lived um, was also kind of weird because I was just known for being, you know, I, and I talked about how I got recognized at the airport, like, and that was like for the, the real first time. But like in high school, I would always get recognized. So I, I, in high school, I would always get recognized, uh, even though everyone hated me. Every I would always get rec recognized and, and be known for that, that that dude with the with the podcast. And and it was so early on in the game, you know, uh, it, it was just it was crazy. But my whole my whole point is is that if I would have stayed cons and obviously I had a lot of things that happened during these years. So, you know, right. hindsight's twenty twenty, but it is, it is what it is. But if I would have stayed consistent from 2010, when we when Joe Rogan and me both started, and, my, and yes, I know Joe Rogan had an advantage. He already was famous at that point. He already hosted Fear Factor, and, you know, he, was, you know, he had a, a big, bigger following than me in terms of at least, com, you, know, co, you know, comedy fans. Um but there was a point where my podcast was like doing bigger numbers than Joe Rogan. Um, and I give Joe Rogan his, his flowers, you know, uh, he is the goat. Um, but you know, if I would have stayed consistent and persistent for these, for those last, you know, 13 years, this show would be on such a, it would be one of the biggest podcasts in the fucking world. And that's something that I have to, you know, deal with for the rest of my life. And, uh, not necessarily. I don't dwell on it. Uh, like, um, I think you need I, to look at it. I've, I've accepted. No, it. I've accepted it because it makes me want to work harder. That's why I've been putting. That's why, and this will lead me to the point of where you know, when I came back from this hiatus this year, you know, I, I said I, my whole plan was to, to start season thirteen, not season fourteen, but season thirteen t tomorrow. But I said fuck that. And in, our, in, our, in, in those two months, late October to, you know, now, you know, I've accomplished more than I did in those whole 12, 12, 13 years in two fucking months. Because that, 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 really that, that taught me, a, that taught me a lesson. And that made me, that made me, that makes me want to even go harder. And, you know. I, I I can't wait to have that wild story and be able to talk tell him that you know when I'm on his show because I was listening to the podcast he did with Dave Portnoy really good interview um, and, and you know he was saying like 
you know, yeah, I'm the pioneer of podcasting, which he is. I give him his flowers, but I, I've never, I never cringed that hard in my fucking life. That shit hit my fucking soul. Like that shit, hit, that shit hit me. I was like, you know Damn. what? I was just thinking because you know, uh, I don't know if you know, he signed a hundred million dollar deal with Spotify for his podcast. I mean, so like, I would have gotten at least like a ten to twenty, thirty million dollar deal at least. Oh, like, man. You know what I think, though? I think that uh, maybe you would have missed being able to give a certain message if you did it at that point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I say, see what you're saying. Like, you know, like maybe we're we're reaching out people right now that you would have glossed over because you would have been so big. You know, look, look at the people Joe Rogan interviews. I'm not even sure because he interviews, I, he, I, I don't, he interviews the best, the biggest. People. I don't I don't watch his I don't watch, I don't really watch uh, podcasts too much. You know, I watch yours. I watch some people's. But what I'm saying is I feel like you would have been with all those big stars. And right now there's certain people that might need to speak out like 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 me. You know what I mean? I'm so grateful that I got the opportunity to even meet you to do this because I know I know that my story will will reach a lot of women and and, you know, anybody, but women, especially once I tell my full story. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, And that's that's one of your that's your purpose. Exactly. Yes. It's my passion. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy how much we've uh, I've we've I've accomplished. Uh, all of us have accomplished, you know, the past two months, three months, like not not three months, like two two and a half months, if that. Like, I, I, this is we did fifth. I think I believe this is the fifty sixth or fifty seventh episode. So I not I did. 57 episodes in, in, the, two in, months? in a two month span. But here's the real fucking kicker. Like there were a couple of weeks where I only put out like one or two episodes. So, the, so, ba- so I, I basically, I was knocking out like two episodes a day. Uh, I was just going fucking hard. And, you know, obviously, you know, I have more fans and listeners uh, than I ever did. Um, and, you know, I've, interviewed you know fucking five six seven famous musicians within the last two months and and a lot of them that i grew up listening to which is fucking just a weird fucking surreal feeling yeah it's like it's like it's like you're fan growing but you have to be professional at the same time i still i still fan but i I still fan out i I can't help myself i i I gotta work on that but but uh because it's so (laughs) it's it's, it's still so so it's still even uh, that i've i've interviewed people you know even you know i don't know if i even told you this but like one of the the first inter the first kind of like big interview that i did was only a couple months into me podcasting it was in early 2011 and um, I can't believe I, I'm forgetting his name because he changed his, his, his like stage name. And I apologize, dude. But, um, long story short, he wrote the song just the way you are for Bruno Mars. Oh, wow. I was 16. Yeah. I was like 16, 17. That was the first interview. He wrote that song. So he won a, he won a Grammy. He won a billboard award. He won an ASCAP award. Which is like, and then a song, you know, it's a songwriting award, basically, um, which is like the top of the top. Um, and, and then he also ironically, and I don't know, David, if you're listening, he also produced Lupe Fiasco's most underrated song. And David, if you have not heard this song, or you guys have not heard this song by Lupe Fiasco, <coughs> type in Lupe Fiasco till I get there. It okay. Is I believe it's his, I, you know, you might not, just, uh, people that are listening might not agree, but I personally feel like that is his most underrated song. And the fact that, he, that this dude that I interviewed, the first interview, you know, starting right when I started podcasting, this dude wrote the fucking song for just the way you, for Bruno Mars, for just the way you are, and produced my, one of my, like one of my favorite Lupe Fiasco songs and his most underrated song. Um, and he's also, it's really cool because you can actually hear his voice, um, in the background vocals on the hook. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, I I wonder what would happen if you tried to like reach reach out out to him now. Yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, but yeah, I I just, uh, even if I can't get another interview, I just wanted, I just want to say thank you, dude. Like you were the first person that like I 
interviewed that like was like successful like that it, it was just, uh, just cool looking back um but yeah so like powerful. yeah um we're, we're doing so good man the, the the numbers are really increasing at a significant rate you know i'm getting more uh support and, and, and love um of course you know when that happens you know, people come out the woodworks, you know, people that don't like you, people that are, you know, the closeted fans, the people that just view your, you know, posts and stories, but don't ever comment or like it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. The, it's crazy. The amount of people that have come out the woodwork for at least me, at least me personally in the last month than ever. And like, I, I, there's been over like 30, 40 people. <laughs> like it's fucking crazy like people that didn't like people that like like yeah it's it's crazy um and and what i'm, what and I'm not and context? i'm not even at that big level and I'm, I'm not even fucking famous yet and like this shit is happening like i, I went i went I, I um uh the other day I, I i got a haircut and the dude i walk in and there's a line and dude but dude made dude and then uh, he just finished cutting someone's hair he got up, then the uh, person was waiting in line, and he was about to walk there, and he said, "Nah, let me take care of, let me take care of you." Talking about me, I'm like, "Nah, exactly. I'm not gonna, I don't want to be that dude. I'm uh, nah, right. I'm not gonna it, be that it asshole. Feels weird to be that guy, I'm not gonna like, be that asshole. I don't know. If I was in a rush, I'd be like, "Yeah, all right, maybe." <laughs> yeah, and then I <laughs> then I would probably pay for the other guy's haircut, but like, I, I don't, yeah, want, I, don't have, I don't, I don't want to be that dude. Um, but it's just weird how it's weird. And I've experienced this multiple times throughout my life when I started podcasting and how big it got in Palm Coast and around uh, during that time. Um, and, and then also just managing a, 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 um, a few successful artists. And we don't have a, we don't have a good relationship anymore, but, you know, I still have love for them. So shout out to shout out to, uh, you know, Heartbreak Hunna. Shout out to all of them. Um, shout out to Fabian, shout out to good people, Red Lotus, Juju, everyone, you know, uh, I wish nothing but love, you know, you know, even, uh, that, that, that's just my mindset, you know, even if, you know, we, we work together and things don't work out, I still want to see everybody eat. I still want to see everyone of succeed. Of I, 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 that's just, that's just who I am. Like I, I, um, yeah, and I know. That I mean, I, I, and ironically, I know that these people are actually listening to the episode. So yeah, I, I, and I'm not just saying that because you're listening, but I, I honestly mean that. Like, I honestly want to see everyone win, just because there might have been a fallout. You know, I, uh, yeah, I. I, I, I definitely <laughs> can say that I only know one of those people that you just said. Not personally, obviously, but I think I've heard like one of yeah. Heartbreak on his songs. No, he, I, he's, he's, he's very, good. no, he's very talented, very talented, and good people are fucking very talented. Let me say, if is that you, a rapper? Um, well, the, the, um, basically, it consisted of two members at first, which was Red Lotus and Juju the Mad Scientist, and now they, they have a collective with a, multi, uh, a few different artists. Um, but I, if you do not know who good people are, Red Lotus, Juju, Mad Scientist, and the whole other collective team, you need to check them out. And you really need to check out good people's, you know, uh, early content. Um, th th their music that they dropped, I believe, you know, in 2020 and 2021, you need to listen to that music. They are so very talented and they will make it and i uh again just wish you guys the best like i honestly i can't wait to see i can't wait to turn on the radio and hear your shit um uh, yeah that's just that's just i gotta really, check them out for sure hell yeah they're, they're really talented um but yeah um damn i can't believe i can't believe i just knocked out that many episodes and you know the show's doing so good now like i, I mean this is it. i talk I, i'm very hard on myself when it comes to this shit so yes it's you know doing good but it's not at the level where you know I, i'm not content obviously and i know it'll get to that level it will um but we're just only getting started um th th this is just the start i mean if you think we're doing things now, big things now, this is so fucking little in my mind. This is like 1% of what will happen. So, um, 
yeah, this this is just the start, and and everybody that's been su- su- uh, supporting the show, whether it's you know from the start a couple of years ago, now, you know, um, you're gonna see the, this whole journey of of me talking on my podcast, uh, on it with JT and different other podcasts about just the journey, and you guys are gonna see the progression. Um, and, and that's also going to be part of, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of having the documentary made. I'm just starting to film some of that shit. Uh, also starting to write my autobiography. Um, Big things coming yeah, 2023 for definitely. sure. Definitely. I also, um, I would like, you know, I want to put this out into the universe. I would like in, to have a tour in 2024 for like a motor, you know, to be a motivational speaker and go around and do speaking engagements. Cause I did my first speaking engagement, public speaking engagement ever when I was uh, 20 or ni- 19. And I was so fucking nervous. I did awful, but, um, but oh, yeah, wow. I never knew you did that. It's a hard thing to do if you've never done it before. Um, but yeah, I, I did. A, okay. Um, but I know that I would do way better now. Uh, it's it's something it takes a lot of time to really fully master. Um, you know, there's a difference between being just public speaking and then being a great public speaker. Um, yeah. yeah, it takes a, a lot of a lot of courage to get up on a stage in front of people. Like, I know that like in between songs, I like I get nervous even just being like you know asking the crowd how they are or. Mm-hmm. anything like that i just like singing like that's it you know mm-hmm. <laughs> it's scary to like try to think of something to say even if i have like something written out or you know pre-planned i still i'll forget i'll just forget everything yeah no i i, I know what you mean um, i always wanted to be like a comedian but i don't think i'd be able to do it I, yeah um, i i've always kind of wanted to do that too but uh yeah it's weird because <laughs> i don't know why but for me personally you know, being an aspiring actor, and that's really what I, that's my real main love. Um, I personally would l- rather do like comedies, rom coms, and like dramas, and maybe some action movies, but uh, mostly like comedies, like drama, romance, like that. Uh, I'm not, I, I mean, obviously, if I, you know, I'm not going to turn down a role, you know, if it's a fucking horror movie or, you know, some, you know, Marvel movie or something like that. But I just feel like me personally, as an actor, uh, I would do better in, in those kind of roles. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know, like, if I would ever be able to be, like, an an actress, unless I was just, like, playing the role as like myself or someone very similar to me because I, I don't think I could like cut the accent that I have. I, re- I really don't. Well, that's, don't know. they have, they have, they have people that they have people that you meet with and they have, they consult with you and they're like voice lesson, voice teachers. Oh really? Yeah. Like just to like, yeah, the, 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 there's there's people in the entertainment industry that that'll that'll teach you the dia- dialogue and the, the accent of whatever. It, it's not it's not it's not always not it's it's a hard thing to do because I, I see for you know in a lot of Boston movies, um, you know, if a, a lot of Boston movies there are majority of the actors that are in it are actually from Boston, but when there are the, the actors that aren't from Boston and they have. They're, they're trying to do a Boston accent. Most of them can't even fucking do it. It's so it sounds so fucking bad. I'd like to see like someone with like an English. What about Leonardo? You know, you know, you know, you know who you know who Idris Elba is? No. The, I, I, maybe I would you recognize a face, but I mean, I'm, you seen the, I, I said you, I'm horrible. Have you seen The Office? Yes, of course. Okay, so you know, my, Charles Minor, the black uh, guy, the, the, the the black man. Oh, okay. The yeah, boss, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, very, yeah. very, very, te- one of my favorite actors of all time. He should be in the next James Bond. Um, that's a whole <laughs> other discussion. But he has, you know, he's from the UK. So he, he, he mastered the, he mastered, yeah, he mastered the, the American accent to a fucking T. You like, because you wouldn't even know that he was British until he does these interviews and you're like, what the fuck? 
I've never seen an interview. So this is the, today is when I learned that he was actually English. You, you <laughs> have to look it up because you, how he nails that he can a hundred percent nailed the American accent. And you listen to his interviews and it, it's straight up a total different person. Um, it, that, that, that's just something, I don't know if I could do that. That would take a lot of work. Um, but, I don't even know if I want to ruin his character for myself in my mind and hear him. No, nah, you need to just for shits and giggles. Just, just <laughs> see it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah. I want to say again how excited I am to you know be a part of this uh, with you. And if there's a new podcast for the mental health awareness, or if it's oh yeah, we're, we're we're definitely gonna do, we're doing that as well. That, that's, oh, that's so that, yeah. exciting. Yeah. And, and, uh, if you guys are listening or watching, there'll be more details about that coming out very soon. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, yes, we are too. Yeah. And I just hope that, again, our stories and, sh- you know, sharing our stories <laughs> and experiences can help others and, and, and hopefully inspire people because that's, that's all, at least from me personally speaking, I can't, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Madeline can say the same, you know, you know, we're doing this to help others, you know, and, and to, you know, use our voice and, and use our platform to bring awareness to things. Um, and that's not yeah. always an easy thing to do because you have to be very open and, and, vul- and vulnerable. And, and that's not, you know, uh, always an easy thing to do, especially if it's, you know, very uh, traumatic or, or, or just, you know, whatever you want to call it um putting yourself out there you know you know it's really just to help other people yeah and that's what i'm doing you know i i i I I don't really mind i don't mind being like you know kind of like the face of mental health that's what i I said yeah i'll take all i'll take all this shit as long as i can help people i've told my story in front of you know just people in uh, you know a program or you know whatever facility i'm in but this is this is bigger you know it's gonna help more people and i, I know it will because i have people messaging me like you know like i said yesterday it's it's helpful there's a, there's also people that don't understand it there's some people think that think that i'm making fun of it but i'm i'm not making fun of anything like when i'm talking about something unless i put like hashtag comedy then i'm serious and that was it's like real stories yeah you know like I, I was gonna say uh, before, like with, with helping somebody with the podcast, even, you know, like an hour long podcast, but even these people's like 12 second reels can make my day feel better. Just, you know, just by hearing a positive message or something like that. So I don't know. I just feel like, Oh yeah. People, people underestimate the power of energy, especially positive energy and how that can really change the world. And if we really just spread love, you know, the world would be such a better place. Yeah, I know. People are so mad every day, like driving around here in Florida, Florida drivers. They're mad everywhere. Everyone's mad because life is fucking, it's stressful. It's, it's, we're, we're in a, 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 we're, it's designed for us to, to fail unless you're in a, you know, that 1%, you know, it's, it's a, it's a crazy game out there. But yeah, everyone, you know, I just, again, thank you so much to like, Everyone that's been showing love and support, regardless if you, again, have been a listener for, you know, since the start a couple of years ago, just kind of checking out my shit now, you know, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, it really means a lot. Like, you guys really have no fucking idea. Like, I would still do this show even if no one fucking watched it. Um but the fact that people take their time out of their day and whether it's just for a couple of minutes, a half episode, um, the, the full show, maybe just a clip, you know, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Like to the fans and to people that don't like me, like, thank you. Like, I, I, really, I really, you're just increasing the, my algorithm and just helping me get more attention. So uh, I, I appreciate it. Um, Got to get the engagement up no yeah, matter def- what the cost. Definitely, are. definitely. <laughs> Um, it, it was, it's been a season, it's probably the best season that I've ever done. And, um, I, I honestly, season 14 is really going to be a crazy season. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, um, you know, there's going to be, the, the visuals are going to be better. I have professional cameras now. Um, I've got the editing software, um, and we're going to 
do a lot of live streams while we're doing it. There's going to be live shows. There's going to be uh, a, a lot of stuff. Um, it, it's really going to be good. There's going to be different segments. Um, we're going to talk about different, you know, things that are going on in the world that, you know, yes, that might be talked about, but then we're also going to talk about the things that the mainstream news and media won't talk about. Um, and it's going to be good. We're going to have so many interviews and guests, not only with musicians and actors and comedians, but with just people that honestly, I, I think would have a, you know, good conversation with, you know, and if that, yeah. if, you know, it's, it's all about just having a conversation with somebody and, and just trying to understand and analyze their, their way of thinking and their points of views. And, you know, you might not always agree with what someone says, but, it's always good to have an open mind because you can come out of that conversation, you know, with a lot of wisdom and insight, whether you realize that at the moment or not, it might even hit you a couple of years later. You're like, damn, that, that, that was actually right. So people that, that are closed minded or are afraid to have a debate or a conversation with somebody that even that they might not agree with stop being a bitch. Like, like you, 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 you should do that. That's how you grow as a person. Like you, you need to, you know, and obviously if someone is like fucking crazy, that that's a whole different story. But like, you know, it, it's good to have conversations with people that you, you don't agree with. Maybe even it's with politics. And I know that's a touchy subject or religion or and that's a touchy subject to taboo to talk about. But um, yeah, I, yeah, those I, those are definitely subjects that you know I don't even know enough about to talk about politics and religion. You know, that that's one thing that like you know people like to misconstrue things that people say, and even with just like the little tiny bit of followers that I have, and it's happening to me. Like it's it's kind of insane. Like you can do an hour long interview with somebody, and you can chop it up and skew it to the point where it's something that they didn't even say. Yeah. It, it's horrible. And that's why some people might not want to do interviews because anything you say can get taken out of context. But yeah, I, I definitely agree. But it just depends on what the message is, I guess, if it's worth it or not. Exactly. For the person. Exactly. But yeah, season 14 is going to be fucking crazy. Um, I really can't wait. Uh, it's you, you guys are going to see it's it's going to be much better than uh, then season 13, you're going to see the progression and I can't wait for, the, you know, really good interviews and really good uh, conversations. And um, it's, it's really going to be good. I'm really excited and f it's fucking, you know, airing tomorrow. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of work I got to do, a lot of behind the scenes work, but uh, we're going to get it done. And uh, yeah. Um, again, if you're interested in advertising or promoting your business brand or product on this uh, podcast and all my social media platforms, email me at onairwithjt at gmail.com. Once again, onairwithjt at gmail.com. All of my social media links and everything or, uh, is at onairwithjt. Also, you know, you can listen to the podcast exclusively on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Deezer, Bullhorn, Spreaker.com, Anchor.fm, so many more different platforms. Uh, you can just go to onairwithjt.com. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Justin Thomas Insta. That's J U S T I N T H O M A S I N S T A. And um, Madeline, uh, where can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. On you can find me Madeline Haley Marquez, M A D A L Y N H A L E Y M A R Q U E Z. Instagram is uh, Madeline with two N, so M A D A L Y N N underscore Haley H A L E Y. And my YouTube is Lazy Eye sixteen, and my TikTok is Lazy Eye, just Lazy Eye, no sixteen. Um, yep, that's where you can find me at make funny reels about my life and chronic illness and uh, mental illness and also just life things. I have a four-year-old daughter. So yeah. Yeah. Go, go definitely follow her. If you don't, I'm going to fucking egg your house. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Just, just, you always get that laugh out of me at the end. I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you. T we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, you're listening to On Air with JT, and this is the finale of season 13. Have a great day, Woo! the motherfucking JT way.
is there... If you are a business owner, brand, company, or anyone selling a product and you want to advertise on this podcast, email the show directly at onairwithjt at gmail.com. We are offering extremely low rates for a limited time. Once again, email the show at onairwithjt at gmail.com. Listen to On Air with JT on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Go to onairwithjt.com.